What's up, hoodlers on YouTube? This is Hoodle, hold on opportunity for dear life, where we go over stocks and crypto. I wanted to go over the general stock market, the overall stock market, on uh, four different collection collections of uh, stocks. So the S&P 500 is a collection of 500 of the top performing stocks in the stock market. Uh, this is the NASDAQ 100, so this is the top 100 performing stocks. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, so an average of top performing stocks. And the Russell 3000, which is an average of high performance growth stocks, such as Grow Generation. We are just going to go over the S&P 500 index. Uh, this is the top 500 performing stocks in the stock market. They're rotating. You have to meet certain requirements. If you don't meet them, you drop out of the S&P 500 or certain stocks are uh, inducted into the S&P 500. We're going to just look on a long-term chart. Uh, as you can see, if we go back to all of them, we're at all-time highs on all these. Uh, this, these are the weekly charts. So each one of these candles, these green and red lines, represents one week of time. And as you can see, we're at all-time highs at the top of a green bullish candle on all four of them. Uh, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the stock market and what is going on the, in the economy go hand in hand. They correlate directly uh, in the time frame. But we're just going to look at S&P 500, okay, on a long-term time frame. Remember, this is the weekly chart. So if we go all the way back to the 2000 era, the dot-com bubble, uh, the 80s through the 90s, the dot-com bubble, when we started having technology, computers were becoming more prominent in society with internet and uh, telephone communications, all that type of stuff. If we go back to 1987, why 1987? Because there was a, a crash that happened where there was no circuit breakers uh, before this time and because of this crash there was uh, certain rules became put in place where uh, algorithm like computers trading couldn't crash the system like this something happened with the computers back in 1987 where it caused the stock market to go down drastically within one day and then uh, we had a huge uh, recovery we started recovering this is kind of like the corona crash of what happened Today. So if we look at this time frame from the 80s when we started to grow uh, in industrials and everything and then the 90s when the 1994 and 96 Telecommunications Act happened in Congress, the stock market completely just took off. Uh, fund managers, investors everywhere were just pouring money into the stock market and any dot com they could find, any technology stock they could find, uh, telephones, and especially the dot coms, any dot com you can find, Amazons, your AOLs, your Yahoos, right? We had this huge run up from uh, 1994 all the way to the 2000s, okay? And that was obviously, uh, you know, the 2000s was Y2K, so everyone started was worried about what was happening because I didn't really understand the technology and it, uh, it really wasn't that big a deal. I went through it. So anyways, we run up, right? And we're going to have to start correcting at some point. But when you start running up this high and your RSI is not necessarily following it, okay, uh, that's starting, that's showing you signs that you're going to start seeing some price action to the downside. Uh, it wasn't like a severe crash. It's not like it crashed ninety percent or eighty percent, right? We just had uh, some a uh, correction, okay. And we started to pick back up around two thousand three, and all the way up to two thousand seven, right? And then we had the two thousand eight financial crisis, which most of us went through. We lived through. We saw it. Um, the housing. We saw housing crash, right? As well as the stock market crash and. Um, This is really, these are opportunities to buy. When when these crashes happen, this is the time where you want to be going all in, per se, right? 
uh, when you're seeing all time highs and you want to invest in the market, you can do long term investments over uh, long term periods of time. Right. Uh, or do monthly investments, weekly investments instead of just putting all your eggs in one basket right away. Uh, except when you see a drastic crash like this and you see lots of panic selling, lots of panic selling. Okay. And you, you see the RSI come all the way down here and you showed a huge weekly bullish divergence on the S&P 500. From October of 2008 to March of 2009. So when you saw this, uh, lots of fund managers, lots of traders, hedge funds, uh, lots of heavy buying in this area. Um, that's what happened, right? And we had we started recovering. So we had a huge recovery. And then we started to take off. We didn't uh, start to take off, hit the all-time high until, what was this, March of 2013. And then we really started to take off. Now, what I want to point out is the Fibonacci extensions on the S&P 500 index of the trading range from the dot-com era to the 2008 financial crisis. We draw the high to your low, which we had a double top, pretty much. You had a double top on your dot-com bubble to the 2008-2007 all-time high, right? Uh, you draw your high to your low, and this gives you a percentages of where um, the stock price is in between. And 61.8% is the golden mean ratio of the Fibonacci sequence that is prominent in the stock market all over. And up here we have 161.8%. So uh, that's the Fib Fibonacci, the golden mean ratio Fibonacci extension from these retraces all the way up to here. And where did it go? So where did we bounce from before we started seeing some, um, some corrections, right? We bounced from this low in 2019 and we ran all the way up to 2000 uh, I mean 2009 I'm sorry it took almost six years to to hit that Fibonacci extension but once we hit it we were bouncing up there for a little bit we saw a pullback we saw two pullbacks and we just took off right uh, we started a pullback uh, in 2015 down to 2016 February of 2016 is when we had that a uh, little bit of a correction and then you just really started to took off and started to hit these Fibonacci extensions from the 2008 financial crisis dot com trading uh, level, right? This is the Corona drop where we dropped coronavirus happened and uh, well, it's still happening, but we have we had the crash happen and another V shaped recovery where this is where all time high retail traders came in and started buying at all-time high records and we pushed the stock market at all-time high records where we're at right now where the stock market makes all-time highs 100 percent of the time now the rsi is sitting right here at the 70 level mark okay your macd is uh, pretty high What's most likely is going to happen is you're going to see uh, the stock market move higher while these RSI levels and these MACDs cool off a little bit. They're going to start cooling down until we start seeing a correction. There could be ups and downs along the way, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, like another correction or drop of the Corona drop or even uh, the 2008 or I mean 2018, October 2018. To de December 2018 and uh, this is where I entered the stock market was a uh, December of 2018 I bought my first stock and I've been studying and researching stocks ever since I just wanted to point that out since I was talking about that and these green vertical lines are your Fibonacci time zone so if we did Fibonacci uh, a Fibonacci time zone from like a, a high point to a high point. So from your February 2018 high to your October 2018 high, and we did a Fibonacci 
sequence of time on the weekly, then we get these nice levels, right? And look what happened from this high, this is zero to one. Okay, and two, um, nothing really significant happened here. You could say at two, this is where it started to take off and you broke out of your, the trading range between zero and one all the way up to two. So we broke out of the trading range and we get to three. This is like uh, in music theory, zero, one, two, three, right? Okay. Uh, look what happened. This is when the Corona pat panic happened. Uh, this is probably where a lot of hedge funds, traders, investors saw this. They knew what was going on and boom, they dumped, right? Um, and during this time, we had a record all-time high of retail traders entered the stock market. We pushed it all-time high, right? Uh, and when you get to five, this is where we're at right now. We're in this five zone. Now, that it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, we're at five, so it's going to go down. And it's going to be exactly how it is here. Or, oh, this is where we go up, okay? This could kind of be like how uh, where two is, where we just have some nice consolidation and we make a nice move to the upside. I don't think we're going to see a move to the a downside until we reach up here at this 200% from uh, your high to your low of your Corona drop. We bounced up and we've went past the 161.8 extension and we're halfway in between this. So we could see that move towards 460. I think we're going to see a move towards 458, 460. That's also hitting some upper fib extensions of the dot com and 2008 crisis trading range. We haven't even hit 461.8%, the golden fib extension way up there of the S&P 500 index. So we could push this thing all the way up to 486.